Have you ever bought yourself a piece of gear, either for your motorcycle or for the person, and thought, man, this thing is so good, I wish I bought it sooner? I certainly have, and so today I'm gonna share with you a bunch of gear that I absolutely love, and I really wish I bought sooner on my adventure motorcycle journey. We're gonna start from cheap, and we're gonna work our way up to more expensive items. So let's start with number one. Alrighty, so starting off with the cheapest upgrade that I've made, that I really wish I'd made sooner, We've got the hand grips here. So these are the Pro Grip Rally Grips. I'm gonna leave the exact code here on the screen. And what I love most about these is just how comfortable they are. I've gone through a whole ton of motocross grips on my bike. Stock grips absolutely suck, not even in this conversation. These grips right here I find are really perfect for adventure riding. They provide long day comfort, either on the highway by absorbing some of that vibration, but also in the trails as well. Again, dampening out a little bit of that impact. They're made of a really kind of interesting rubber compound and they have a lot of give and they're just really, really comfortable to feel and provide a lot of grip and traction on the hands as well. And that's even if it's raining or if they get covered in mud. So I really, really like these and it won't surprise you to know that you actually see a lot of Dakar racers riding with these grips on their bike. These are only about 25 bucks Australian. So honestly, make the move now, you won't regret it. All right, quickly moving on to the next item that I really wish I bought sooner, and that is soft D30 armor. And I'm talking everywhere. So I'm talking about the body armor that you can see I'm wearing here, all the way down, including my hip pants and my knee pads. I'd show you those, but I'm not taking my pants off. You have to go to my OnlyFans for that. Prior to wearing this, I didn't have any body armor on my top half, which probably didn't help me when I broke all my bones. And also for my knees, I was wearing typical kind of motocross style knee braces. And I really kind of wore those because those were the industry standard. Everyone wears knee braces. That is of course until like many of you, I saw that video with ex-professional motocross racer, Ryan Hughes, AKA the Sherpa of motocross. And he discussed the fallbacks of wearing knee braces locking up the knees and not being able to have full body movement. And that actually kind of results in the body and the technique not working properly, resulting in more crashes. So instead of trying to protect myself against crashes, trying to prevent the crashes from happening by using soft knee pads, increasing my range of motion, and hopefully allowing me to ride with better technique, not only allowing me to ride the bike better and faster, to ride safer and re reduce those chances of crashing. The added bonus of wearing soft D30 armor as well, as opposed to hard shell plastic pads or braces of any sort, is that they're really comfortable, especially if you're riding adventure bikes and you're riding all day, many hours off-road in the trails or walking around town as you arrive, whatever it might be, soft armor is so much more comfortable and it really, really helps after a long day of riding and after a long multi-day trip in particular. I'm really happy I made this change. And like I said, I really wish I made it sooner. Okay, so we're moving on to the last couple of pieces of gear now, and we are starting to get a little bit pricier. So next up is the steering stabilizer. So have a look down here. This is a steering damper or a steering stabilizer, and it's really popular on enduro bikes, adventure bikes, rally bikes. Essentially what a steering dampener does is that it allows us to dial in the stiffness of the handlebar steering. In other words, what we're doing is we're controlling how quickly the handlebars can move from lock to lock whilst moving through center. It does this through some really high-tech oil valving, but the best way to think of it is like lateral suspension for your handlebars. All right, so the benefits of a steering dampener present themselves in a few different key areas. Firstly, I really enjoy just dialing in the stiffness of my motorcycle steering. What I find is that I actually like to run the steering dampener a little bit stiffer than center. What I get from that is more stability in the front end and less twitchiness. Really, really helps me when riding through the trails. Secondly, I find that because of that stability, I've got way more traction going to the ground and it allows the bike suspension and the chassis to work properly. So I just feel I've just got way more control in the entirety of the bike going through uh, more technical terrain. Third reason is that because you're not fighting the bike for all those previous reasons I mentioned, you're not as fatigued, you're a little bit more comfortable on the bike, you can ride longer days, and you're not taking all of those impacts uh, to the body. The bike, the steering dampener, is handling it itself. All right, the last benefit I find with the steering dampener is that if you hit something on the trail that you don't expect, it stops the handlebars getting ripped from underneath you. It softens that blow, giving you that little bit of extra time to react and control the bike. It's a win-win-win. Whew, all righty. Last but not least on my gear I wish I bought sooner is the helmet. This is the Arai XD4. 
man, I wish I bought this sooner. This helmet has been fantastic. I've had it for about six months now. Before that, I was riding with a motocross helmet. A motocross helmet is great. It has lots of good airflow. Uh, the problem is, is that like most, I have to ride about an hour at freeway speeds in order to get to my you know, riding areas. So I want something that's more comfortable on the road, but still performs well off-road. And trying to find that balance is really, really hard. It just seems that most helmets you know, lean in one direction. The Arai XD4 is a premium helmet. It has a premium price point. But the performance of this helmet, both on-road and off-road, may just justify it. Just as you would expect with an Arai helmet, the XT4 really packs a punch in the comfort department and also just the general build quality. It really does feel like quality in your hands. The sound noise on the freeway is really well dampened and I find myself quite comfortable without earplugs, though for long distance I still obviously will run earplugs for safety reasons. It has a ton of vents on this thing. I mean, like it's quite ridiculous how many vents there are. We've got mouth vents, side chin vents, We've got vents at the top brow, vents in the actual visor itself. We've got exhaust vents. It's quite a lot going on. But once you kind of get your head around everything that's going on here, um, it's a really, really good piece of kit. I can ride in this in cold weather, buckle everything down and be really cozy if I'm wearing a balaclava. I can open everything up to have really great ventilation. When it comes to off-road riding, as you can see, it fits a large pair of motocross goggles really comfortably in there. That plus all of the ventilation I just spoke about actually provides a lot of, lot of airflow. Most adventure helmets just really suck in this department. They really lean more towards that on-road touring and with that, you just don't get the airflow for technical riding. I heat up quite a lot and I have to admit that Arai really packs a punch, providing really good airflow, keeping me cool on the trail. The fact that I can have a helmet that really performs well when I'm out touring on highways and then I can quickly convert to a really good high performance airflow you know, off-road helmet, man, that's just something I wish I had at the start. Alrighty, so that is a breakdown of some of the gear that I wish that I bought sooner, ranging from you know cheap, affordable prices up to the more expensive items. Let me know what you wish you had bought sooner in the comments below, maybe help some others out with their decisions. And if you're thinking about taking a motorcycle camping trip with all this gear and you're looking for a few more pieces to make sure that that trip is comfortable and enjoyable, I recommend you check out this video here. In this video, I break down all of the gear that I think is essential for a comfortable, warm, an enjoyable night under the stars when riding your motorcycle on a multi-day trip. All right, bye.